Hi guys, Luke Gamrot, your host, is here and welcome in the Major Client Podcast. When today my great guest is the Talco Luchen. It's a, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Almost, almost. almost. It's actually Tigo Luiten, but it's it's impossible Tycho to pronounce Luiten. for most people. Perfect. Tycho Luiten from Depper. <laughs> it's a marketing agency focus on the growth. Uh, and how he, he tell it uh, very simple, like how to make growth stupidly simple. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yep. So yep. Welcome, welcome, Taiko. I'm very happy that you are here because we work together. We, we've got something like a partnership with your agency, and I hope we will grow our businesses together. And uh, sure. that's that's the key because. My audience, like most people from Poland, uh, they always look at your country, like Netherlands, uh, you know, with a big attention and big, big envy because they want to work with uh, businesses from there. So, firstly, I want to ask you, uh, how is going on for, for, for in, in Netherlands, yeah. that kind of business? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a lot of work? So, uh, life is pretty good here. Business is pretty good here. We grow, uh, we grew pretty fast. So <clears throat> looking at, at the existence of our agency, we've now existed for about four years. And in these four years, we grew quite fast. <clears throat> I think that's, we started off about four years ago. We were at zero or actually at two, of course, because it was the co-founder Evo and me back then. And we grew to 21 FTE um, uh, this year. Um, so uh, uh, yeah. You know, as far as the amount of people says everything about growth, but it does say uh, a bit about growth uh, when we're talking about agencies, of course, because everybody knows that your growth is limited to the amount of people that you hire. So right now we're at, uh, at 21 people. We're at the phase where we're trying to build a management layer. <clears throat> so um, and, and hopefully having that management layer uh, will allow us to grow further to 35 people uh, in, uh, in the next year, approximately. So. Yeah, that that is the growth that we've experienced so far, and um, and as I said, growing in the Netherlands has been uh, uh, has been going pretty well so far. Um, the market is open to what we're delivering as a service, so we're we're helping companies with growth marketing services, helping them uh, grow online uh, through advertising, building funnels, uh, email flows, landing pages, and so on and so forth. So. The country is very much innovative and the, the, the companies in the country are open to that, these types of services. So yeah, um, business here has uh, has been has been good for us, for sure. I need to ask because growth is uh, now is a very like popular word, very uh, like everyone, everyone say that I, I need to have a growth manager. I need to grow, grow, grow. Yeah. What does yeah. it mean uh, for you and for your clients? Because that's where, what you specialize, that you are helping with that. So if yeah. I'm going to be your client and came to you and say, okay, Taiko, I need your help with growth. How can you yeah. do that? Growth as a discipline is basically a baby of growth hacking, which started to exist about 15 to 20 years ago after the internet boom and after some companies grew very, very fast in Silicon Valley, right? They invented this new type of marketing where everything was me me measurable, where we look at the full funnel, which was basically growth hacking. And I think growth hacking kind of changed um, as in, uh, we were not using growth hacking as a word as much anymore. Um, there are still companies that, that do so, uh, but it's kind of, kind, of, kind of shifting to growth which I believe is marketing, but then with a very, very strong focus on measuring the effect of it on your revenue, right? So we work together with a lot of B2B companies, um, not only, but we do. And oftentimes we measure the effectiveness of our work in the amount of leads that come in. So inbound leads, which is basically pipeline, right? Expected, you can calculate expected revenue with that. Um, and for web shops, we basically measure the amount of impact that we make on their revenue, um, web shop revenue. So what we do, we work together with, with a client because that's what you asked us, how we help them grow is we sit together with them. We have a look at their customers, right? What does their ideal customer look like? What kind of channels are they currently using to get in customers? Um, what does their whole funnel look like, the whole customer journey? 
And basically from there, we see where we can optimize, where we can initiate new ideas to improve their funnel, to, to improve their customer acquisition. And from there, we create a, what we call a growth team, which is a small group of people with specific specialisms in order to help that company grow. So it could be that that team consists out of, for instance, a copywriter, a designer, an advertising specialist, and a CRO specialist. And that then becomes an extension of the marketing team of that company and it helps that company grow. What kind of risk are you seeing uh, when uh, you're thinking about the growth? You can tell it about you know, based on your company, what kind of risk and what kind of achievement or, or the problems you need to struggle during the fast growing. Biggest risk I see with companies, including myself, but mostly companies that I work for, is that a lot of the work that we do has a delayed effect. So it takes some time in order for the activities that we take on to have an actual effect on the growth of a company. And some of it also is not perfectly measurable. So, um, you know, I have to win a lot of trust with my potential customer or with my customer in order to work with him or uh, him or her for a very long time in order to see the actual results from what we're doing. And oftentimes what the companies want is results tomorrow, right? They ask, they ask me for help and they ask me, hey, if you set up some campaigns, can we increase our revenue already in one or two months? And, and, and in most cases, in 99% of the cases, this is, not the, this is not true, right? So the biggest risk is that companies think too short term. So they take on a certain approach and they give up too fast because they don't see the results of it. But you have to think very strategically, think very long term, build, 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 build. And then after a long while, you will see the results. And this applies to uh, advertising on LinkedIn, organic posting on LinkedIn, uh, uh, podcasts, all kinds of content creation and distribution. It takes a while for it to have an effect. But I will pay you when you earn money for me. If your campaign will earn money for, 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 for me, I will pay you. So maybe that's a good deal. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> very often, yeah, yeah. Very, very, very often, question from the clients. Uh, yeah, very, yeah. Very often, situation. I always say that, hey guys, if you want to open the shop, like in, a, in downtown, you need to buy a whole, like, whole room for that, uh, equipment, everything. That's an investment. And if you are, you know, working with the online business or stuff like that, marketing yep. is that cost for you, yeah? So yep. 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 you need because to invest. people are not just accidentally walk past by your web shop, you know, like they do in the city. So you need to invest in that marketing in order to get these visitors, the relevant visitors. Because that's going to be the most uh, asking question from, from my audience. Um, they are mostly B2B companies, tech companies, uh, companies who are looking uh, you know, software partnership in Netherlands, oh, or they are just looking at clients there. So have you, what, what do you uh, advise? What, what is your advice for that companies who want to discover your market? Okay, so what I think you can best do is first of all, try to identify your ideal customer profile. So if you want to come to the Netherlands and, and find business here, then try to really, really zoom in on your ideal customer profile. So it could, for instance, be that your ideal customer profile are uh, B2B marketers um, at companies with a thousand or more employees um, mm -hmm. in a specific sector, right? Could just be the case. But what helps is really narrowing down to a very small group of people because after that you can much better target and and uh, um, personalize your marketing and sales activities. Because what I see a lot of uh, people do that want to do business here in the Netherlands or in other countries in the United States, basically places where you believe you can get in business uh, well, is that they um, uh, uh, that they're too distributed, right? They they don't focus enough. And I think yeah. you increase your chances by really defining your ideal customer profile. And after that, defining how can I reach that ideal customer profile and also acknowledge that after contacting that person once or being visible for that person once, you're probably not going to get in business, right? You need to build trust uh, over a longer period of time. So what I do to get in business here in the Netherlands, and I'm a Dutch party, so it's probably easy for me, but I zoom in very, very sharply on my ideal customer profile 
and I run ads on that ideal customer profile. So for me, it's B2B organizations in the Netherlands between 20 FTE and 200 FTE. And within these organizations, I need the B2B marketer or the founder. So I help bigger companies. I help smaller companies. I help e-commerce sometimes. But if I look at the perfect customer for me right now, that is that small group of people, probably around 30 to 50K people. I run ads on LinkedIn, okay. very specifically on that small group of people over a longer period of time. So I don't target them once or twice, but 30, 40, 50 times, all with high value content, explaining what I do and why I am the expert in what I do. Um, so it's not too commercial, it's just building that position as for me, the agency that is on top of mine, so that whenever they need an agency, they think of me right away. So first of all, very closely define your ICP, and after that, see which channels you can use to be repeatedly visible for that group of people over a longer period of time in order to build trust, in order to build top of mindness. Very interesting marketing tactics. I, I need to remember that. And uh, But maybe the most crucial question is, what about the Netherlands you know, people? Do, uh, do they have something? Have, have they something like specific uh, characteristics? Uh, what, you know, can help you or you can easily go for you know and break the the first first walls uh, or yeah there, is yeah. there something what you shouldn't do never uh, for example because yeah. it's very very interesting from our point of view first of all the dutch people are uh, very direct oftentimes so as compared to other uh, 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 cultures, it, we can be very direct. So in our negotiation, also, we can say very direct what we don't like, what we do like, if the price is too high, you know, um, a lot of people will be very, very direct. So um, get used to that type of communication. Second of all, we like a good deal, right? The Dutch people are known to be pretty stingy, pretty careful with their money. So if you are able to prove that you can provide the same service or the same tool, for a lower price than a Dutch party would, which is probably the case because the the rates are simply a little bit lower in Poland. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be something that they're very sensitive to. What I do think you need to take into account that you pro that probably will not help as good, which I see a, happening a lot, is just bombarding people on LinkedIn in private messages in order to do business with them. So you know, if you're a founder or if you if you are a popular uh, profile, popular business profile, you get a lot of message requests and a lot of messages yeah. from people that all look the same. You know, it's all, it's all the, the subject line says, quick question, are you looking for a web development agency? You get so many of them. So um, try to be different than that, right? Try to actually deliver some value because what I see with um, Dutch business leaders around me is that they don't like these messages. Growing very fast, there are multiple, mul multiple problems First, what came to my mind is a people like high quality specialists. So if you want to grow fast, you need to pay attention on the quality of your services. If you want to have yeah. the quality of your services, you need to pay attention to who you're hiring. So how do you want to solve that problem? We have uh, two main problems as an agency, of course, two main problems that an agency leader uh, that, that keeps up an agency leader. And I think that that goes for other service businesses, but it also goes for product businesses probably. Um, uh, the first one is business, right? Revenue simply. And yeah. then when you have that revenue, it's people. And then you hire people and then you have too much people again, and then it's revenue again. So it's constantly this battle of trying to find the right balance to, between what you're earning and what you're spending on the right people. So zooming in on that people problem, right? There's a big scarcity in the market for the type of people that I want to hire. But basically there's a big scarcity in the market for every type of person that you would want to hire, whether it's a developer, an advertising specialist, uh, UX, UI, you name it, there's a shortage. So how do you distinguish yourself? How do you create this, um, well, basically uh, uh, um, a favorable place to work? And what I do is first of all, I have two people um, that our consultant in our organization, but also partly focus on um, talent acquisition. So they're constantly trying to find new and smarter ways in order to find the right people, right? Uh, in terms of advertising, in terms of visiting universities, in terms of uh, oh, just sending direct messages to, to, to people that have the right profile. And the next, and the second to that, I'm focusing on building a great culture. So um, we want, we think that, you know, as soon as you have a 
very good culture in place that keeps people and attracts new people. What does it so mean? We, so, so, sorry for the right. question. What does it mean? Great culture. Well, for you, of course. What, what's what's yeah, meaning yeah, yeah, for yeah, you yeah. and for your people? I think a great culture um, in this sense. I mean, we can we can look at it broader, but in this sense, basically, that people are happy with what they're doing. That um, uh, people like the work. Uh, that they do, that people like the other people that are working here. So basically that you hire people that like each other and that you spend enough time and, uh, and attention to activities that allow people to bond with each other. The biggest deciding factor of people staying in an organization, there has been research into this, is whether they have a friend or friends in the organization. If they do not have friends or not one friend, the risk is very high of them leaving. So you have to create this atmosphere in which people can become friends with each other by um, having the right working pressure, not too high also, not too low, by organizing enough fun activities for everybody, by hiring people that can click with each other. So, you know, you, you even though diversity is very important, on a couple of fronts, you should hire people that have a similar mindset, right? If it's, it, if it's people with a very, very different mindset, it will be very hard to click for them. So these are some things. Uh, what we do is we measure the um, employee satisfaction very uh, regular, um, very seriously. So we have tools. It's called Office um, Office Vibe. We have tools that send out questions every uh, uh, every week to the people working here. How do you feel? Um, did you have a good week? How do you like the projects that you're on? Um, uh, you know, how do you like the new people in the team? Constantly to gouge how people are feeling, and we're trying to improve that score in order to to become just a very very great place to work and in that and via that way attract new people first part of your answer was about uh, this achievement like how to get the new talented people for the organization yeah. i try to go deeper in uh, that question because there are plenty of bigger agencies or uh, bigger company on them on your market yeah. and yeah. they can you know, they can propose the better salary for them. And do you have something what is, you know, the big, bigger, um, you know, advanced for that, that the peak people just choose your company than other because they don't yeah. care about money? In essence, we do very much or pretty much the same as the other agencies, right? Just on a slightly smaller scale. So yes. where do you differentiate? Well, there are people that want to work at a smaller organization that see the benefit of having a closer, smaller, uh, uh, um, a close knit team. Uh, but the next to that, I think we offer a little bit more flexibility. So we're a company that is very much built on trust. So we have unlimited holidays, uh, for instance. We have- Whoa, 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 uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses. <laughs> unlimited holidays? Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, it's not the case that people take off a couple of months per year um, without us asking questions. But if you do a good job, then we won't ask any questions. So we're not measuring how often people take off. Uh, we'll, we won't intervene unless it gets very crazy. Um, and we trust that people take off the time that they need, uh, but don't take uh, uh, take off too much time that their teammates will suffer, right? I'm sort of surprised because, you know, in, in Poland, there is still this culture like um, in, in the works, work environment that, you know, you've got the uh, yeah, um, contract, you've got only 26, 27 days or free. Everyone just, yeah. you know, measure that. And I can't, and that's a very interesting idea. I never heard about that before. And that's, yeah. that's what I want to speak with my team about, because it could be, uh, it could be interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. To tell me something more about the effects of that, like people, uh, people just taking a, a less or more three days or they are, you know, before the holiday, just they, they just working very hard to settle up everything. What's the, what's the effects? So generally we see that uh, people may maybe take off slightly more days, but it's not a lot than what is usual in, in our country. So um, I, I think people are pretty good about it and pretty responsible, but also if somebody is not feeling too well or somebody wants to take a big trip, uh, a longer trip, uh, going backpacking or in Asia or whatever for two months, then that is completely fine, right? We will not uh, challenge them on it. We will not ask them, ask them difficult questions as long as it's managed correctly. So what I like to do is give people ultimate responsibility and ultimate trust. I try to create as uh, clear roles as possible. Mm -hmm. And as long as you can take care of 
your work being done also when you're away by other people, then it's fine with me. So yeah, so, so back to the original question um, that, that, uh, um, that, that, that piece of trust that we're uh, creating basically is, uh, is very, very important. And I think one of the reasons why uh, we can be a more attractive employer than bigger agencies, because we can offer these types of innovative, innovative ways of working. You know what I mean? Things also like a workation we organize, things like uh, uh, being able to work everywhere, uh, anywhere. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to be an as open and as innovative workplace, workplace as possible. Of course, without the actual output, without the actual work suffering, because that is the number one priority at all times. Nice to hear it. Okay, I will. I will send you my resume. I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, please tell me. And that question I always ask my my uh, my, my guests. Uh, your bigger biggest failure during the um, whole trip of being a, uh, being an entrepreneur. Uh, do you remember? Yeah. Like first, what you came to your mind? The biggest failure. So once, for for a client, uh, we did a an advertising campaign on uh, on a couple of advertising channels, and it was basically there were basically campaigns to gather leads that we would eventually give to sales, right? Leads yeah. that we would give to the sales department, and there was kind of a um, a connection that needed to be made in HubSpot. But we weren't responsible for that connection. But I also failed to check who was responsible for that HubSpot connection. Mm -hmm. so we ran a lot of campaigns for a lot of budget. In the end, it was 150K in euros, 150,000. Yeah. And we found out after a couple of months that because of the lack of HubSpot integration, all of these leads never got the sales. So we basically evaporated 150k and that was a really painful one eventually we didn't get punished for it because it wasn't our fault but i did feel like it was my responsibility to check if that connection was made you know but you live and you learn you know you do these things and you will never do it again uh, because it's it's such a painful experience and uh, for for example uh, the the biggest mistake with some assumption about the business and the business uh, you know building a business uh, i've got i've got a lot i've got a lot uh, so, so uh, I'm going to ask you, what was the, the, the biggest mistake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think at the beginning, um, we were very easy to hire people, you know, so we were very, very uh, um, easy to hire people based on gut feeling. Yeah. And we made some very bad mistakes there. So in, in the first 10 people, we made some very bad mistakes hiring people and gut feeling. And right now, because of that, we have a very rigid process in place with a first call, with a second meeting, with different people with a case, you know, evaluating somebody as thoroughly as possible before hiring them because a bad hire is a lot of money. It costs a lot of money and bad energy. So I would say that the, the biggest mistakes for me were some bad hires that I simply made in like half an hour talking to somebody over a cup of coffee. Don't, don't ever do that. Great answer. Thank you. So at the end, I just want to ask you about uh, your exit plan. Because uh, yeah. people, people just I and I, I can I, I saw that I, I saw that on my uh, example that people never think about that. Hey, guy, I'm just you know running, 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 running. I'm just building the company. What's your plan? So my plan, I have a very clear ten-year plan. Uh, right now, where we're 21 FTE, we're um, uh, hopefully uh, this year doing about 1.7 to 2 million in, in revenue. Eventually, I want to grow the business either to 5 million or to 10 million. When I grow to 5 million, I want to merge with another agency in order to get to 10 million in total. Why do I want to go to that 10 million bootstrapped? So without external investment, because at that 10 million, you become interesting for VC capital. So if I am at 10 million, whether that's to one merger or just growing to 10 million organically, which proves to be very hard in agency land, but we can try. After that, we want to attract capital, sell a part of our business, and then conduct a buy and build strategy. So buy smaller agencies and grow them. That is the idea. So eventually in 10 years, I want to have an agency of 500 FTE um, and 50 million in revenue. And that's in 10 years. And at that moment, when we are there, then it could be the case that I have new energy to start building that further again, or that at that moment, I'll say, Toodaloo, I'm off to do a uh, to go conduct a new adventure. I hope that uh, after ten years I'll be somewhere somewhere around and say, okay. <laughs> the only ones that can achieve that is us too, right? So 
I hope so. Uh, so, uh, Taiko, uh, I just want to ask you for, for, for the end to say like a couple of sentences to our audience about the specific of your services and the agency. Uh, you guys should know that if you want to contact with Taiko or you want to go with some campaign or ideas, business idea on that market, like uh, Danish, uh, Netherlands market, just you can contact with Louder and Higher. We work together, but I hope, please, uh, what they should remember about Dipper. So what I would say is the most important to remember is that we are the ultimate growth marketing agency here in the Netherlands. Um, even though we're a slightly younger company, we matured very, very fast. We have a specialism in B2B. So whenever you, um, you know, want to work together or need any B2B services, um, or want to offer your services maybe via via, then just know that we're a B2B growth agency, one of the market leaders here. Um, and maybe also important to state that we're very much specialized in acquisition. So, you know, um, getting new business via paid advertising, building funnels, uh, these types of activities. I think that's basically the gist of what you should get um, if you would want to partner up in some way. Thank you very much. Thank you to uh, to be here and uh, see see you soon i hope okay see you soon man thank you guys for listening for being with us and see you on the louder and higher channel ciao <laughs>